Billy from Permapastures Farm. All right, well, here's our new addition. Coco the bull. Isn't he cute? He is the cutest little bull ever. He gets that from my side of the family. <laughs> anyway, we got him from uh, Deep South Homestead. We made a trip down there to go visit our great friends, Danny and Wanda. And folks, if you haven't checked them out right there, you want to see the best way permaculture, homesteading, all of it can be done. Some of the most efficient ways I've ever seen. That's where you want to go. Like I said before, people go to Zone 5 to go get inspiration. I go to Deep South Homestead, and I'm not kidding there, y'all. So that was awesome. that was a joy to be there, learn so much, get this massive download of information and fellowship that I don't ordinarily get. So I want to give a big shout out to them. And... Um, Thank you so much for your friendship, and it, it is a true blessing. All right, so we got Coco home, oh, a few days ago, and we've not put out a video yet because we've just been up to our necks in so many different things in a good way. So anyway, Coco got here, and um, first thing we did, you're probably asking, well, why is he, why is this bull in a place where there's a little forage? Well, folks, that's by design. Not only did Coco go from essentially, we'll call it sea level, he just went up 3,000 feet, so he's now a mountain bull. That's number one. Number two, he just drove 700 miles from the forge he's used to, to where we are. Okay, you want one of the quickest ways to, uh, to put some of your stock in the grave, take them from where it is 180 degrees different forage to a place where it's totally different. Their gut biome hasn't had a chance to adjust. So what we've done is, uh, Mr. Danny down there was so kind to sit here and give me um, some of the hay that they have down there, some of the stuff that he's used to. Now we're titrating that with the hay that we have here. So we started off, it was, let's say 80, 20. And slowly but surely, sorry if you hear the pigs in the background, Coco's kind of getting acquainted with all of them right now. And also with the uh, cows that are across the road over there, they kind of do a call and response. It's the cutest little thing. But anyway, we've kind of titrated his dosage, if you will, of what he was eating to what he's going to eat. And so we've been making that adjustment and he's doing extremely well with it. Now, typical of any animal that came that far and came here, it was a feeling out period. You could tell that he was somewhat standoffish, but he was always, always friendly. So if you got you and the woven wire between you and him, you could always reach over and he'll come up and he'll sniff you and do all the things he's supposed to do as a curious little bull. And then as a couple of days into it, then you can see that he's getting more and more adjusted. Like I would, I could walk around the back of him before and he would watch me the whole way. Now I can get behind him and he's cool. So that's exactly where we are. We're in a place where he doesn't have a whole lot of forage right now, but that is completely fine because I don't want him having a ton of forage around here. Now follow me over here and you'll see that in the areas where it's pretty cool stuff, because there's patches of forage here and there, you know, stuff he's been nipping on a little bit. But also what I am noticing is that down here, you can see this Chinese silver grass. He mowed off every bit of this. Now there's other things in here he could eat, but he's actually eating this silver grass. So um, that's promising. Now I'm sure he won't always eat it, but it'll depend on the stage that it's in. Now we got him in this little place for a couple of reasons. Number one, to get him kind of titrated over to where he's used to eating the forge, but also he was accustomed to woven wire, which is what we use everywhere. Now in the deep South, it's a great system they have and the woven wire serves well. He doesn't challenge it, even though it's kind of ganky right now, it's not real tight. It's not any way that, because it's all temporary. So what's gonna happen at this point, just like we do our sheep and everything else that we bring that's new here, we're gonna, slowly integrate him. Like I said, he's had a lot of changes. He came from where he was at sea level to where he is at 3,000 feet. That's an adjustment. The highway, the interstate trip here, that was also a jarring adjustment. And now he's to the point where he's pretty darn comfortable. 
So now that we had him kind of introduced to his paddock and we're picking up his excrement every day, which by the way is another video all together. Now we can really, really make this chicken tractor on steroids sing. So we're gonna transition to make him work in the model that we have here. He's gotta make the transition from woven wire to poly wire, okay? Um, does it make sense to put a to put up a net every day for somebody like for somebody? Yeah, he is a member of the family. Does it make sense to put up a uh, net? Absolutely not. So what we're going to do at this point? He's already today is his first day on poly wire, okay? And it's kicking at about six thousand volts. You only need about three to get the attention of a cow. So this is the part. No matter the animal, when we bring them here, whether it's pigs, chickens, it doesn't matter. Sheep. This is the part I always hate. Now he's over here getting. Check this out. He's checking out the poly wire reel. He doesn't, he doesn't yet know what it is. So we're going to try to keep this video short. This is going to be his first day. And uh, hang on, let me try to, Coco, Coco, that's not what you want to mess with, buddy. Okay, he's checking it out. It's not hot yet, but it's going to be. This is the, uh, this is the part I'm not real crazy about. So um, yeah, he's going to have to figure out that's not something to play with because honestly. We got these two strands up right now, and that's gonna be more than sufficient. He's nosing on it, and I wish we already had it hot because, yeah. anyway, it's off right now, but it will be. Anyway, Coco is in this small little footprint, but it's going to expand, and where it's going to expand is we're using all this scrap woven wire that we have, and he's gonna be making his way up through these mountains. He's gonna be getting slowly but surely. So we'll expand, we're, we'll expand the woven wire first, but we're going to leave this up, you dig? To make absolutely sure that he respects this stuff to a high degree that even though the woven wire is out there, we're going to leave this where it is and we're going to expand this about 20 feet and then so on and so forth. If he respects it, then we'll attach this to the new place where the woven wire is. So just like we, just like we train all of our other animals, it's going to be the same exact thing. So y'all, Coco is off and running. He's over there checking out the pigs right now and he's doing great but he's gonna have to have friends i mean typical of any animal like this they're social creatures they're not they're not tigers you know so they're gonna need friends and right now he's having nothing more than a call and response but we'll get him some friends it won't take too long i just want to make absolutely sure that he is super well adjusted follows me with a bucket with the stuff he loves and uh everything's going off as it should right now so there you go, Coco, and let's get a little closer and see if we can, look at this. Like straight out of Orwell's animal farm, you know? There's the pigs, there's the cows, so they're getting, there. they've been acquainted for a while, and that was freaking him out at first, too. He was like, he's used to cows, he's just not, or pigs, he's just not used to them in such close proximity, I don't think. Or maybe he is. Anyhow, it was a brutal assault on his senses. Now that he's adjusted, it's time to get him hot to polywire. So... He's such a sweet little bull. And if I weren't raising my voice right now, I can get in there, pet him, do all the things I want to do. Because primarily, he is not to eat for us. He is, Michelle can actually fall in love with him. And Kendra and every, all the other kids that come around here, they can actually fall in love with him because he has a very, very different purpose for us. Um, I need an animal because we are so understocked with what we need to keep this grass the way it is. So we're going to need him and a bunch of others, and they're going to be off and running. So, hey, y'all, here's the first update on Coco. Like I said, he won't stay in the barn forever. He'll make his way out, and uh, we'll let you know how that process goes. I have every confidence, every confidence that he's going to do extremely well. So with that said, y'all, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.